Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anticholinergic agents. Anticholinergic agents can be classified as anti muscarinics and anti nicotinic agents. Now, anti nicotinic agents are of two types one, ganglionic blockers, next one is skeletal muscle relaxants. Let us see about all these agents in this video. This is my YouTube channel. If you like my video content, do subscribe and share. Just type my name in YouTube, G Sai Rajesh, you will get the channel contents. Let's get into the topic. So, anticholinergic agents are classified as anti muscarinics and anti nicotinics. Now, understand these things. Anti muscarinics are known as parasympatholytics, whereas anti nicotinics you cannot call them as parasympatholytics. The reason is parasympathetic system belongs to autonomic nervous system. Right, but nicotinic receptors are present on ganglion as well as neuromuscular junction, which is which belongs to somatic nervous system. This is the reason why you cannot call anti nicotinic as parasympatholytics, it's it only restricted to anti muscarinics because anti nicotinics you have ANS component is there as well as somatic nervous system component is there. Now, anti muscarinics you have two type two kinds of uh, drug classes are there naturally occurring arcalytes and synthetic substitutes let us explore about them now uh, muscarinic antagos, antagonists are anti muscarinics natural arcalytes atropine and hyosin are there synthetic atropine substituents benzatropine homotropine tropicamide perenzepine ipratropium glycopyrrolate oxybutanin all these drugs has got specific clinical uses before getting into them let us explore about the prototype drug atropine now atropine effects are in order of this increasing dose that means at smaller doses you have these effects the moment you increase dose these effects will be seen now the first and foremost is decreased secretions understand this one atropine is anticholinergic what are cholinergic responses salivation urination digestion and defecation so all secretions are reduced like salivation Bronchi, bronchial salivation, sweat, everything will get reduced. What is the next one? Medriasis and cycloprasia. What is the response of acetylcholine on eye? It causes meiosis, pupil constriction. So anticholinergics will have opposite action that is medriasis and cycloplasia. Now hyperthermia. The reason why atropine causes hyperthermia is especially the sweat secretion is reduced. Sweat is one of the major mechanism by which thermal regulation occurs. With sweat, body temperature control will be there if sweat is not there increase in temperature will be there and that results in vasodilation see vasodilation also causes body temperature control when blood vessel is dilated more surface area is available for the blood to lose heat so this causes vasodilation now next one is tachycardia the effect on acetylcholine or cholinergic system on heart is reduce in heart rate the opposite is increase in heart rate that is tachycardia. Sedation is CNS effect. Urinary retention and constipation as we have seen the M2 receptors which are present in GI tract will cause urinary voiding as well as defecation. Both of them will get inhibited and you will get urinary retention and constipation. See behavioral excitation, hallucination and sedation both of them are related to CNS muscarinic receptors. So overall these are all what the effects of atropine on human body. Now, excess dose of atropine may result in atropine toxicity. And what happens in the toxicity? Let us see one by one. See, this is a kind of mnemonic. It says, hot as hair. See, the normal body temperature of hairs is 102 to 103 degrees. The human body temperature is only 98.6 uh, uh, degrees. Whereas, the hair temperature is 102 to 103 Fahrenheit. So, the the word heart is hair is derived because of this high temperature and atropine overdose increases body temperature because I have just explained you the sweat is decreased which is which is a mechanism to control body temperature. Now, blind as bad it is because of midriasis, dilated pupils. You know, bats cannot see. Because of that, it has got the word blind as bad. Now, dry as bone, dry mouth, dry eyes, decreased sweat, all of them will result in dry as bone one. Now, red as beet. See, we have just now seen what happens with hyperthermia. It results in vasodilation. When blood vessels are dilated, redness is appeared and that is what is called as red as beet. You know, the beetroot appears very red in color. So, flushed skin will appear like this. The last one, mad as hatter. CNS effects will cause mental agitation and delirium. See, this word has originated because in 17th and 18th century, hats are made up of mercuric nitrate. Mercury, the which is present in the hats, may expose the human brain to mercury and it 
it was causing altered mental status. Hence, it is called as mad as hatter, but atropin has also got same kind of effects. So, all these are atropin overdose effects. Now, let us understand the clinical uses of all these anticholinergics. Now, atropine, it can be used as antispasmodic, antisecretory and management of acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. See, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor increases the levels of acetylcholine. To control this, atropine can be used. And it can also be used as antidiarrheal and it is used in ophthalmology, which has got long action. So, these are all the clinical uses of atropine. Now, tropicamide is also used in ophthalmology, especially to cause midriasis. Pupil is dilated, so eye examination is possible. Now, ipratropium, thiotropium, especially used to treat asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They are given as inhalational drugs. They do not cross blood brain barrier, so CNS entry is not there. Mucus viscosity will not be changed. They cause bronchodilation. Now, scopolamide, it is used in motion sickness. When, when people move in trains and buses, they have a kind of vomiting sensation. That is what is called as motion sickness. It can be treated by scopolamine because of its CNS activity. Causes sedation and shorter memory block, a kind of amnesia. Now, the next one, benzotropine trihexyphenyl. See, this is a, these are also CNS drugs. So, they are used to treat Parkinsonism and in acute extrapyramidal syndromes to treat that, these drugs are used. Now, last but not the least, see, there are a group of drugs are there like oxybutanin, trospium, darfinacin, solfinacin, tolteridone, fesoteridone. All these drugs are used to treat overreactive bladder. This is called as incontinence. In, especially in elderly people, they lose the control of urination and incontinence will be there. Involuntary, they will pass urine. To control that, these drugs are used. Why? All of them are anticholinergics and they will, they will, they will inhibit that uh, urinary incontinence. So, these are all the clinical uses of anticholinergic drugs. See, again, uh, okay. Okay, the next one is nicotinic receptor antagonists. See, I told you already nicotinic receptors are present on ganglion as well as skeletal muscle. So, let us see about ganglionic blockers. You have only few drugs are there like hexamethonium and mecamylamine. See, the predominant effect is they reduce atomic tone. See, if you remember atomic nervous system, two neuron system is there. One neuron is pre-ganglion neuron. At the ganglion, you have nicotinic receptors are there. And another neuron starts from here and goes like this. So, both the systems, sympathetic and parasympathetic, you have ganglionic nicotinic receptors are there. When you block it, it completely reduces atomic tone. See, these drugs are not clinically used because they have variable effects. The major effect is they prevent baroreceptor reflect change in heart rate. You know, baroreceptors are present on iota. The, the job of these receptors is they will sense blood pressure. If mean arterial blood pressure is increased, baroreceptors are activated. It increases parasympathetic tone and reduces sympathetic tone. What happens with that? Heart, heart rate, stroke volume is reduced. Total peripheral resistance is reduced. So, mean arterial blood pressure is reduced. This is how they will control. This is called baroreceptor reflex. But these ganglionic blocking drugs has got major effect of this one. They prevent this reflex and they have got varied effects because of that clinically they are not widely used. Now, next getting into the important one, neuromuscular blockers. As I told you, it, this belongs to somatic nervous system. Understand this word, neuromuscular blocker. At the muscle junction, a neuron comes, releases acetylcholine, it acts on the nicotinic receptor and causes muscle contraction. The drugs which will block these responses are known as neuromuscular blockers. NMJ blockers, neuromuscular junction blockers. They prevent acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction. Prevent triggering of skeletal muscle contractions. Now, why do we need them? What is the major clinical use? In order to facilitate muscle relaxation before surgery or for mechanical ventilation during surgery or in ICU, these drugs are used. Skeletal muscle should be relaxed while performing a surgery. To get that, these drugs are used. Now, when you see how it happens, you see, this is the axon terminal wherein you have acetylcholine is stored in vesicles. Once the trigger occurs, the entry of calcium releases acetylcholine. Now, the released acetylcholine will be acting on nicotinic receptors. Look at them, nicotinic receptors. Once this nicotinic receptor is bound with acetylcholine, it activates the channel which allows sodium and potassium movement. It causes sodium to get inside and potassium goes outside. What happens is, see this. This is, called, this is what is called as resting membrane potential, usually which is negative inside. So, by the entry of sodium, it is converted into positive. This is called depolarization. 
polarity is changed and this depolarization is what enables to contract the muscles this is what happens in a normal physiology when you use drugs this thing is blocked now we have two different classes of drugs are there class of neuromuscular blockers depolarizing agents as we have seen just now there are drugs which will cause this depolarization but finally results in neuromuscular blockage how let us see the next class is non depolarizing agents in case of de depolarizing agents you have succinylcholine is example this is also known as succamethonium both of them are same word succamethonium and the another drug is de dexamethonium now non depolarizing agents you have three different classes are there short acting medium acting long acting now understand the mechanism mechanism of action one class of drugs will cause depolarization and sensitize the receptors and block the effects and their class will directly block the receptors they are known as competitive inhibitors let us understand in detail see at neuromuscular junction you have nicotinic muscular receptors are there stimulation results in hyperactivity of skeletal muscle but this is important see nicotinic receptor desensitizes very quickly upon excessive stimulation this is what happens with depolarizing agents when depolarizing agents are given they cause excessive stimulation and causes desensitization of nicotinic receptor when they are desensitized skeletal muscle blockade occurs because because they do not work when they are desensitized they are known as non competitive that means even though acetylcholine levels are increased the effect will not be reversed now they act as nicotinic agonist specific drug is succinylcholine two phases will be there at initially depolarization fasciculation will occur but phase 2 results in desensitization this is what happens and this is what is the mechanism of action now acetylcholine esterase inhibitors will enhance the phase 1 depolarization will be enhanced and may reverse the phase 2 and they are rapidly hydrolyzed by pseudo esterases because they have due to this they have short duration of action now when you see the other agents non depolarizing agents they are known as competitive antagonists they are nicotinic antagonists understand this one they they are blockers they are kind of blockers so competitive means when acetylcholine levels are increased they goes out and, and normal action is reversed now tubercurin is a typical prototype and it is reversible with acetylcholine esterase inhibitors why they increase the levels of acetylcholine when acetylcholine levels are increased they are competitively replaced they cause progressive paralysis face limbs and respiratory muscle no effect on cardiac and smooth muscle cns entry is not there so no effects will be seen now non depolarizing muscle relaxants you have mevacurium which can act only 15 to 20 minutes whereas intermediate acting 20 to 50 minutes acting atracurium cisatracurium vecuronium rocuronium is there and finally long acting more than 1 hour dexacurium pancuronium picuronium is there now one of the major thing with uh, skeletal muscle relaxants is they may cause an adverse effect called as malignant hyperthermia it is a life threatening syndrome characterized by muscle rigidity hyperthermia hypertension acidosis and hyperkalemia see all of them are because of excessive release of calcium so this is associated with skeletal muscle relaxant especially succinylcholine which is used in anesthetic regimens now it is due to the rhinodin receptor l type calcium release excessive release now see uh, you can see hyperthermia increase in temperature will be there sometimes it is life threatening if it's not treated what is the treatment dantrolene it acts directly on skeletal muscle to decrease contractility by blocking calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum what is the major problem in hyperthermia increased levels of calcium release and that is blocked by dantrolene it is used in states released in extreme muscle rigidity muscle rigidity such as malignant hyperthermia see malignant hyperthermia is also associated with general anesthetics skeletal muscle relaxants and with antipsychotic drugs so three three of the classes may cause malignant hyperthermia general anesthetics skeletal muscle relaxants and neuroleptics all of them can be treated by this dantrolene so this is about anticholinergic uh, lecture uh, if you like the video do subscribe and share the video thank you for watching this video